um, Acharya ji. I have been in that stage before where I would get angry at God. So my understanding of God at that point was there is an external entity somewhere out there overseeing everything, trying to protect the entire world and humans. So that at that stage I was angry at God. Why are things happening in, in a bad way? Eventually, I, I mean, I, I, I could see that there are things that I am doing wrongly and they are more of, the, 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 what I am facing is a result of my own actions. And then a second kind of query then arose. Okay, fine, I do not know what I am doing wrong, then why is not God guiding me in the right way? So there is still anger at God. <laughs> Even though I am doing the So mistake, said one has to proceed both totally and sequentially into it. So you admit you are making a mistake. The mistake is not coming from nowhere. Where is the mistake coming from? And where is that coming from? And where is that coming from? And all this is so enthralling that you will forget to suffer. It's all so very linked to each other through a cause effect chain and you soon reach a point where you start seeing the absence of any real self in the whole event you start seeing that it is all so very dictated by forces that you cannot even identify with And then it becomes difficult to suffer for a stupid reason. The more you go into your suffering, the more you will see the falseness of the sufferer. Okay, let's not even call it falseness, just call it the not me character of the sufferer. The not me character of the sufferer. I still have queries on, like, now I understand that there is no external entity as such when, when it comes to God. There is no I as such. You cannot say I understand that there is no external entity. If there is this internal entity, then correspondingly there would be an external one as well. So that statement should be reserved for future use. Hmm? As long as you are there, there are external entities. Don't just jump the... No, no, nothing, nothing. Your life is not theoretical. It is experiential. Hmm? If life is experiential, how can the basis of life be theoretical? So until I experience it, I will go with whatever... You are already experiencing a lot. When I say life is experiential, by that I do not mean that you have to experience something more or something wonderful or something divine. What I mean is, is that you, all your statements are coming from the suffering that you experience. Is your suffering theoretical? Is your confusion theoretical? When these are your experiences, then you must talk only from your experience. And this has to be clearly understood. God is not an experience. But suffering is an experience. Therefore your suffering is an important judge. Not of God, but of your ego. But there are those who do not understand this and they start talking of experiencing God. Now God or truth or peace or anand, they are not elements of experience. But Still experience is very important. Why? Because it is your frustration with experience that brings you to spirituality. Therefore, the experience that frustrates you must vanish. Hence, the aim of spirituality is not to provide you with more relishable experiences, but to give you freedom from bothersome experiences. We will therefore continue to take experience as an important judge, as an important indicator. As long as you are experiencing suffering, where is liberation? 
So experience is an important indicator of what? Not of God, not of truth, but of your liberation. And that does not mean that you will experience liberation. Please be clear on this. That only means that you will not experience suffering. Do not make it mean to you that you will start experiencing liberation on top of the suffering that you are experiencing. But now I am not able to relate to what or who is meant by God. Like is there a need? Is there a need to really even talk of God? But then when the scriptures, the, all the saints keep praising now, I don't know what exactly they're talking about. Your sincerely is there to explain when that happens. The scriptures first of all implore you to look at yourself. If you are suffering, then God is nothing but freedom from suffering. If you are longing, then God is nothing but the fulfillment of that longing. If you are lonely, then God is nothing but freedom from loneliness. Therefore, what is God? That depends on who you are. God is that which fulfills you. And why do you need fulfillment? Don't ask me that. You are saying that you are unfulfilled. And there are several who have mentioned here, Acharya Ji, why do we need Mukti? I don't need any Mukti. You need Mukti. That's why you come here and then you ask me, why do we need Mukti? You don't need Mukti. Go away. Nobody needs Mukti. Adhyatma does not start with all is okay, all is well. It starts with I admit I am unwell. And if you admit that you are unwell, how do you not know what liberation means? What does liberation mean to an unwell one? Liberation from the unwellness. That is God. And therefore God is not absolutely or universally lovely or desirable. You will love or respect God only as much as you love the dissolution of your suffering. The more you want your suffering to cease, the more you will love God. These two are just two ways of saying the same thing. When you say, I want my suffering to cease, let me put it differently, I intensely want my suffering to cease, then you are speaking in the negativa. The same statement can be put in an affirmative way as, I love God intensely. The statement which is expressed in a negative sense as I want my suffering to end is the same statement as I love God. And the more one of these statements would be, the more the other statement would be. In fact, even among these two, your yearning to be free from suffering must come first. The more intense is your self-love, therefore, the more intense would be your love for God. 